Yo, it's me, Uncle Ricky. Let's talk about the chess game, the chess match that's shaping up between Jack Smith, the special prosecutor, and the Donald Trump documents case, and Donald Trump, the star, the former 45th president of the United States, and possibly even traitor in chief. Allegedly. Now, we all, I guess, you know, we had to come, we had to be on another planet if you don't know. Donald Trump is twice indicted, the only president to ever be indicted on criminal charges after leaving the White House. Should have been indicted while he was in the White House, but the Department of Justice has got this silly rule about you can't prosecute a seated, a seated president uh, for political reasons or whatever. But, seems that Trump crossed the line in the state of New York when he paid off Stormy Daniels for sex and he wanted to keep that quiet before he took his famous 2016 run which put him in the White House for four years and really screwed up the country and also when he left the White House he still didn't know how to behave himself he took a bunch of documents including very sensitive, secret, top secret documents with him to Mar-a-Lago for God knows what reasons. Perhaps we'll find out thanks to Jack Smith. Now it seems that, you know, that the country didn't really want to prosecute Trump. They didn't want people to know that Trump had walked off with all that stuff. So they asked him kindly for a year, a little bit more than a year. Come on, Donald, just give it back. You know, we'll be, you know, we'll just call it quits and everybody, everything will be good. But Donald being the Donald, and for whatever reason, whether it was personal pride or swag or maybe to make a little pocket change, we're not sure yet. I think Jack Swift is going to find out for us, so he already knows. And he's going to, during the trial, he's just going to drop the bomb on Trump. But now that all of that's done, and we had the original bollocks with Judge Eileen Cannon who bent over backwards, uh, you know, uh, to uh, do everything she could to make it soft on Trump. And then she got, she got smacked down by the Court of Appeals and then the Supreme Court said they didn't want to have anything to do with it. It had to stay in the lower courts. And now we sit where we sit and Donald Trump is going to go to trial on federal charges. But the thing is, Eileen Cannon got the case again. And it's hard to figure out what she's doing, whether she's trying to straighten out her act or whether she's being coy and trying to help Trump on the slot. Because, you know, we have this thing in our judicial system about right to a speedy trial. And on the surface, it seems that Judge Eileen Cannon wanted to live up to that. She made a speedy trial date, which would have been in August. The thing being that if you look beneath the surface, which dealing with Trump, you always have to, because he says one thing and does another. He's publicly said that he wanted a speedy trial, and it seems that an August trial date would satisfy that request. But once that goes down on paper, and get signed off, Trump's lawyers could have said that they want to delay the trial because they don't have time to prepare, even though Jack Smith has turned over every piece of paper, every tape, every witness that he has. And yet he hasn't held anything back. This is a chess match because on Friday, two days ago, because it's Sunday now, Jack Smith made a motion, filed a motion to, on behalf of the Department of Justice, to delay the trial, the trial until sometime around the period of December the 11th. Now we have to ask the question, why is the Department of Justice, with all the information they have, with the indictment they have, with the volume, voluminous volume, of evidence that they have against Trump 
so much evidence that Trump's lawyers are quitting left and right because they don't want to be tied up to this debacle because they know that Trump is like the Titanic and he's going to go down and go deep, deep down and go down hard. The thing is, perhaps it's Eileen Cannon being coy because she knew by setting the date so soon that it would not seem unusual for any defense attorney to ask for a continuance on a trial this big this important with a trial date coming this fast with all the evidence that they had to review it's not that they don't already know the evidence they produced half the evidence half the stuff that they have against Donald Trump is from former attorneys of Trump who have run afoul of the law and use their knowledge to leverage themselves out of possible criminal prosecution and the loss of their law license, their livelihood. Former Attorney General Barr said that everything that is going to happen to Trump is of his own making. Trump dug his own grave. I mean, but he, I, I don't see why people find this to be surprising because Trump had never had any respect for rules and regulations. Even when he was in the White House, he knew that the stuff he was doing was, at the very least, illegal. <laughs> and he made no bones about what he was going to do. He would come out, say he was going to do it. People would tell him, Mr. President, you can't do that. And then he would double down and do it anyway. This has been Trump's MO his whole life. He does not give one tinkers, you know what, about the law. It's all about how he feels. Now Jack Smith is being an excellent prosecutor because he is trying to stay 10 steps in front of Trump. They say when you play chess to be successful, you have to be three moves in front of your opponent. In other words, you have to be aware of the move they make and then your counter move has to account for your opponent's next two moves. That's what they say. I play chess and I haven't mastered that and you know, but maybe that's why I'm not such a good chess player. But it seems that Jack Smith, this is how Jack Smith is used to operating because of his experience prosecuting European criminals and warlords in The Hague, the international court. This trial that is coming up is a history maker. It has never happened before in the history of the United States. But it seems that if anybody is prepared to prosecute a social icon, uh, I don't know, the, the, a cult leader per se because of the MAGA following, and a political figure because he is the, I guess, the head of the Republican Party because for some reason, even with everything that's on him and voices of wisdom from elder spokesmen in the party, it seems because of his clamp on the extreme right wing that perhaps they're going to shatter another record by nominating uh, perhaps even at the time, a convicted felon as president, if they think they can get away with it, for president to run for the president of the United States. Unprecedented times in this country. This is where the chess game that's being played becomes obvious because Jack Smith, by getting in front of Trump's defense, which is his standard defense in any legal matter, whether civil and new to him, criminal. This is how he operates. He delays, 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 delays until either the plaintiff gets tired and gives up or the court gets tired and, you know, forces. They can't force the settlement, but they can do stuff to, uh, you know, make the party settle. And then Either way, Trump looks at this as a victory because, one, people are willing to deal just to get away from him, to get out of his clutches, and two, 
he gets to spend the narrative and Jack Smith is taking that option away from him because if they go to trial on December the 11th which Arlene Cannon will have a hard time not approving that date which gives the defense ample time to prepare their case which they have no preparation for because it's not a winnable case they can't defend Trump for what he did the, the evidence against him is just overwhelming by bringing the trial in on December 11th the experts say this trial will probably take four to six weeks to complete the jury will come in and they will have a verdict before the election season begins and that's what Trump that's what Trump really wants to do he wants to delay so that he can get the trial set to where it comes like you know four to three to four months before the election so he can use it as spin control saying that he's being politically persecuted while he runs for president and use it as a battering ram against Joseph R. Biden, who unfortunately will be the Democratic nominee for President of the United States if he freezes that long. The American political system, the American political scene <laughs> is foul, to say the least. But when you deal with people like Donald Trump, what do you expect? So the country, I mean, can own, even if you didn't vote for him, even if you didn't vote, the country, no matter which party you're in, can only blame itself. But let's hope that Lady Justice will be the blind, you know what, that she's supposed to be. And Trump will bump his head for the first time, criminally. And he'll find out exactly what the consequences are for all the mess that he has done. Well, that's it for me, Uncle Ricky. Y'all can think about it, meditate on it, and <laughs> rotate on it if you want to, but I still love you. Peace out, and God bless from Uncle Ricky at Uncle Ricky's house. Hi. Yep, it's me. This is the end of another episode of Uncle Ricky. I hope you enjoyed it. Look, I enjoy doing this, but I need your help. I don't want your money. I just want you to, you know, hit like, subscribe, comment, share, help me keep doing what I'm doing. And that's bringing the truth to you. So as always, peace out and God bless. And have a great day from Uncle Ricky at Uncle Ricky's house.